Now, this is the time actually to consider the premises of the planning school. Before I discuss the premises of planning school, it is appropriate to share with you that planning school accepts all of the premises were assumed in design school. And it furthers actually, or it builds, as I mentioned that, the planning school is not totally a different school. Rather, it is building on the design school. So it also accepts all the premises, all the assumptions of the design school. And it also offers concretely its three premises we see one by one. The number one is, strategies resulted from a controlled, conscious process of formal planning decomposed into distinct steps, each delineated by checklists and supported by techniques. I would ask you to stay with me and just pay some attention to the different parts we have just described in the first premise of planning school. I mean, strategies resulted from a controlled, conscious process of formal planning. I mean, strategies will result from a controlled and conscious process of formal planning. So, the strategies are first developed as deliberate. And this is the result of well-controlled and well-conscious formal process. Then these are decomposed into distinct steps. First, to finalize what would be our strategy. Then these are just decomposed. I mean, decomposed means these are divided into different parts. Say, once you develop a design in your mind, and when it is the time to put this design to practice, you have to divide into different parts. Because the design as a whole you have conceived cannot be as a whole put to practice. For putting it to practice, you have to divide it into different parts. Rather, dice and slice method. And by this method, you decompose the strategies into distinct steps. And each delineated by checklists and supported by techniques. I mean, I just gave you an example as the word checklist was mentioned here. Under the planning school, I mean, design school only prescribed that there should be a SWOT analysis. The analysis of strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. Whereas the planning school went into the detail. And for each part, for example, for strengths, it developed a full checklist that where actually the strengths will come and in every organization under the planning approach you are required to deal with those checklists and these same checklists are also for all other processes so unless you deal with or you use those checklists under the planning school your planning or strategy development is not considered formal and it is not accepted so under this school you have to use different checklists you have to use different techniques and many of them you have already studied under your undergraduate program. The second premise is responsibility for the that overall process rests with the chief executive in principle. This is what we also assumed under the design school. That strategy developments overall responsibility is on the shoulders of your chief executive officer of the organization. But there is a slight addition you can witness here that responsibility for its execution rests with staff planners in practice. As design school is mostly informal, whereas the planning school is formal. So the planning school prescribes the strategy will be conceived and developed by the CEO, but it will be executed and implemented by the other staff, maybe the other managers working as the heads of different divisions and different functional areas of the organization. So this is one of the contributions or additions by the planning school here, that strategy developed by CEO, implemented by other officers of the organization. The third premise of the planning school deals with the strategies appear from this process full-blown, as it was also in the design school to be made explicit so that they can then be implemented through detailed attention to objectives, budgets, programs, and operating plans of various kinds. Just to make my point clear, so far under the planning school, I would just take one hypothetical example, that there is a change in the environment. 
and for example this change offers maybe we are dealing with an educational institution which has been in the market for last 10 or 20 years it has got a good brand name in the market there is a change in the government policy which provides number of incentives to the private sector education initiatives this organization seeks opportunity from this policy shift by the government and based on that its strategists its top planners they simply conceive that we should spread education or we should expand in the different parts of the country and for that after debate they choose that we should offer our franchise I mean we should offer our brand name to our able partners into the different part of the country or different part of the regions of the country this is a strategy which has been finalized after this is finalized now this strategy is transferred to the different departments which who are concerned for the implementation now in those departments the based on the strategy goals and objectives will be set based on those goals different activities will be finalized for all those activities different budgets will be allocated and based on all these things ultimately the strategy will be executed and it will be put to practice this is how step by step and formally the strategic management process is prescribed under the planning school thank you very much